Hi, it's Mike. Uh, welcome back to the shop. Uh, this is going to be a probably, well, definitely really long series. I shot, I don't know how many hours of video. Um, it was, I'm going to do it separately than the regular uh, shop drop stuff just because it's, it's long and uh, hopefully not terribly boring. But uh, I'll show you what we're going to make. Um, and hopefully people will find this useful. So this is a, a print, but eh, it's probably not going to show up because it looks all washed out. Anyway, um, what, what this is, and uh, this is what they're going to look like. So what, what these are, are uh, jaws to fit a curt vise, and you can see there's, they're full of index holes. Um, they use uh, quarter inch dowel pins. A friend of mine named Randy, uh, about 20 years ago, came up with this idea, um, and you can buy these from Kurt now. They're, they've, you know, what they do is they act as parallels, um, so you can, put, you can put pins along the bottom and they make parallels. Obviously you can put pins on this end and you have a positive stop that's built into the jaw. Um, but what's really cool is, depending on which holes you use, you can get common angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, um, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, I think 15. Um, I, I laid these all out in the CAD program and, and I made a, or I've started making a chart with uh, the various the ones and I'll finish that. Um, anybody that would uh, want to make a set of these, uh, I'll, uh, I'll post the PDF link in the Dropbox, probably at the description in the video. Um, it, it took a while. These are made out of 4140 tool steel um, or, you know, chromoly steel, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're not hardened in ground because I don't have a surface grinder or, or any way to do that. Uh, heat, no heat treatment stuff either. Anyway, um, so it's uh, going to take it through all the steps and from anywhere from you know squaring up the blocks and all my errors because of course there are some, especially when you try to video. It's amazing how they creep in when the camera's not on. I make a few mistakes. When it's on, I make plenty. Um, but uh, you know, th there's. I'm not going to belabor the point because it's there's already way too much in this video. Um, so that's about it. At the end of the other, at the end of the, the actual video, I was running out of camera battery. And uh, you'll see this jaw being installed on the vise. Unfortunately, I put it on upside down. So uh, I will move the camera over and take a picture of it right side up just to show that it actually does fit right. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoy. Okay, um, finally over at the mill. It's been a lot of interruptions this morning. Just various things, phone calls, mail, my wife coming in. Nothing, none of it bad, just slowed me down. Um, Anyway, I got a couple pieces here of uh, 4140 hot roll. So, I mean, I could make these out of probably anything. It would be fairly soft, but if I'm going to go to this much trouble, I want them to be um, pretty stout. This uh, They're only going to be one and three quarters high. Um, so, uh, you know, about fit, a little less than 50 millimeters, um, maybe 45. So this was actually two and a half inch stock. So I cut it down to about two inches roughly it's uh it's a little over it's about two and an eighth anyway so that means there's going to be a lot to come off but it's you know it's rounded on the end so we've got to take quite a bit of metal off um, because this is is hot roll it is not very flat or square um, so we're going to use a the shell mill uh, i swapped out the inserts the aluminum ones and put in uh, the ones for steel and actually it's the first time i've used those inserts in this um, so we'll, we'll find out how good it works so to, to square these up we're going to start off with uh we're going to get one flat side and then uh, we'll make that our reference, put it in and then um, square the edge to that and then we'll put that in against that and, and just on one parallel and then that way we can get another parallel side with two parallel, well with two parallels we'll have two sides and then we can do that and we'll square the ends. Um, get these exactly the same uh, in terms of width Thickness is, is not super critical. Um, there, I think it's uh, 735 or 730 on the print. I got to look. It's a little less than three quarter. Um, it, it's you know it's basically the same size as those. If it's ten thousandths bigger or smaller, it's not going to make much difference. Uh, what does what will really matter is when we're done, is that they're both exactly the same height, um, and so and and the same length. And, and what I'll do is is we'll put them in here. Um, and clamp it all together really good, and we're going to do them all as a as a piece, as one as you know together ganged, so that that way we know they're exactly the same size. Um, and even then, once they're all done, uh, we'll I might skim them afterwards. Uh, the the key is that when they're in there, we want these 
pinholes to be absolutely in line. So get them exactly the same size and then clamp them together in, 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 in the vise. And um, all the holes are going to be done while they're together so that that way they line up perfectly. There's no question about misalignment because you know, the whole idea is that we have precise angles and if you use them as parallels that they're actually parallel. Um, so we're, we'll be good there. So I've already checked. My vise is square. Everything's good. So to start with, we're just going to do one face. I'm going to take the saw cut side because at least it's reasonably flat in comparison to this. Just use one parallel to start with and uh, put it in there up against the parallel. And I got a piece of copper wire and it's actually doesn't even look, you know what, we may have to change our plan because this is not even close to being square. So we may have to start with just lightly squaring that even though this is really wobbly. Let me grab my wrench. Ah, that was good. Just drop my drill that I use for the table. So it looks like this isn't even square enough to do that. So we're just going to put this in here really. We don't really care. We just want it so that these two sides are roughly parallel. Um, actually, this side's the this is the one that's really off, so we'll put that side down, even though it's not very good. We don't really, we don't have to hammer it down or anything. Just, just enough so that this is reasonably parallel with the vise, and the copper will take up the space in our from our hot roll. So we'll just face that off and do the other one, and then we can start actually squaring these up. So let me go uh, turn on face converter, and we'll get started. Bring our table up a little bit. It's locked. All right, bring our knee up, I should say. Could bring the quill down more, but this thing's already going to be putting enough load on the mill that I don't want to. Uh, I want it pretty rigid, so. So this is a two and a half inch cutter. Um, and for two and a half inches uh, for surface feet on uh, tool steel, it's only about 120 RPM. But since this is carbide and it says to run it at, I think, 400 meters a minute, um, I'm going to run this in uh, the low range on high on the mill, which is, uh, let's see here, let me zero my quill DRO. So that's about 660 RPM, which should work okay. And um, we'll find out. So let's, uh, okay, there's zero. We're gonna take, oh, I don't know. We'll start with 50 thousandths just to make sure that this cutter is gonna be happy. So that sh should give us about 50 thou. Back that up a little bit, off our table. Just ease into it here. Well, we must have did something wrong. So, we'll just bring up the knee until it touches. There we go. That doesn't seem to be bothered. It's already stopped touching, so. Yep, yeah, that's what I get for not starting on the end. That yeah, looks like it's gonna be fine. So, we'll take, uh, take 50 and see if it's good. And if it is, we'll probably go for 100 or whatever it's gonna take to at least clean this up. with that. I don't think we got to take a lot more. So 
Yeah. I don't know, another 20, 30 thousandths maybe. I don't want to take more than I have to to start with. I'll take another, let's take, uh, let's go 30. We'll square one block and, and show how it's done and make sure it looks right. All right, I think we've got it pretty, pretty good. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, good. We're clean all the way to the end. So that's good for, for this one. So while that's not, obviously not even close to totally parallel, what it'll do is let us have at least one, a reasonably good set of surfaces to clamp on to do the face to start with. Again, we're just going to put one parallel because we don't have anything that's real smooth. But now we've got one reasonable face to go up against the vice jaw. Still use our copper. And you can use a solid steel rod. You can use a lot of things, but I like the copper because it will form to the to the part for the most part. It sounds weird, but. matter but so this way at least it'll be pretty square and we'll snug it up good just compress our copper and so we're clear of the top of the vise looks like that's in there good so I think we'll we're gonna take off just basically as little as we can to uh, get it get it trued up get that roughly Centered. This a, the mill's the face mill's bigger than the part, so we should be pretty good to go. Let's uh, begin start quill stop, lock it, and just bring our knee up and touch off, and then go from there. Okay, so that's just touching. I'm just gonna go. Uh, I'm just gonna go 25 to start with and see if that'll clean it up. Don't want any more than we have to. And the uh, ship show up, but they're they're just perfect. Straw into blue, so that's that's just right. So couldn't be happier with that. We got her pretty clean. There might be just a hair left. It's not bad though. Okay, I think we're gonna call that one good on that side. Yeah, it's might have moved a little bit in the vise because it's cut a little on the coming back. Of course, it doesn't have much to hold on to right now. So this is going to become... Oh, I lost my Sharpie. Oh, well, this will work. So that's going to become my reference surface for the rest of it. So that one is going to become... Everything will be end up referenced off of that. So now we're going to take this off. And uh, take this burr off real quick. Took our burr off. Make sure our vise is clean. You can see, yeah, that scale looks like rust all over everything. But we do have a good surface. So we're going to put that in there. And I'm not worried about how seated that is. What I really want is that. Um... All right, I'm back. I. Uh... While I was on the phone, I, I rethought what I was doing and decided I, I was definitely not doing the right thing. Um, because it, it, you know, I was going to try to make it parallel to this, but I really don't have a good enough square side here. So what I'm going to do is, is use this reference, and then we'll, uh, we're going to make this one square to that, flip it over, and make those parallel so that I can hold it in the vise this way and do it right. So um, 
I'm going to just use a piece of quarter inch rod to set the bottom on because that way I don't, I don't, it won't influence this up against the jaw being flat. So we're going to use our piece of copper again. And uh, snug up our jaw. And I don't really care how tight that is, but I am going to just tap it for good measure. And I did smack my thumb with copper a few minutes ago. so Got that going for us today. Oh good, the heater just kicked off, so now you can probably hear me again. So we're going to snug this up good and tight, so that way it will be square to this back jaw. So we're good there. I'm just going to give it a light tap. Now we're good. We'll get sort of centered up there. And uh, so line this up a little bit just to get it close. I'm going to actually bring this up against the quill stop so I have a repeatable just in case. Lock the quill and we'll bring the knee up and touch off and uh, get us a square edge. All right. So there's that. I know this is pretty well crowned, so I'm going to give it uh, 50 thousandths. Should be good. We'll lock the Y axis. This isn't going to be our final edge anyway, but at least we now will turn this over and put this one on an actual parallel or even flat against the bottom of the vise because that'll be fine so that we can actually have it square. So we'll run this back. Get our burr off of here. So now, we'll take our rod out. That looks good. And uh, we'll take the one we just did, which is that. Put our reference side up against the back jaw. We we'll still need our piece of copper because this is still rough. Since we can't feel the parallel, we're just going to feel when this doesn't move anymore and sounds well seated, which it is. So now we will have two parallel surfaces, so that'll be good. We'll uh, bring our quill down against the stop and lock it. Should be a quarter inch high from our rod that was in there, so we'll go up 100. To 50. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's good. Uh, so this isn't going to be final. Uh, we need, when we're done, we need about an inch and three quarter, and I bet we're probably still close to two inch. Actually, it's a little more. So yeah, these were these were cut pretty good oversized. Originally, I was going to make the the inside two inches, and I ended up revising it. Um, so these are actually going to have to have quite a bit of metal taken off. So I may end up with a roughing end mill at some point. I, or I could just use this thing, take it off. Um, but that way we'll have we'll have lots of extra. So there's no points. Left a nice finish on there though. All right, so we know we can take at least 50. I'm gonna, we'll take, uh, let's just see if it'll, how it goes with 100 thou. Hopefully not too bad. Find out if it screams. Yeah, it doesn't like that. That's a little much. <laughs> So let's uh, let's go back down to 50. Good. Got a sure does leave a nice finish on there. That looks really nice. Not quite ground, but pretty good. Alright, so now we should have two parallel sides. I'm going to measure it real quick just to make sure that everything's square. And if not, then we'll square it up and 
do it again. We got a lot of a lot of metal to play with. There's a little extra chunk in this corner where I started too deep, but it's got to come out anyway, so not a big deal. Let me, uh, let me get a caliper. Okay. Well, so we're at uh, looks like 209. Two on that end, and 2092 on this end. So we're parallel. Perfect. Exactly what we want. So now we have two parallel sides that are square to this. Take our burr off of here. So that's good. So those will all sit good in the vise. And my brush went down over here on the inside. Get a brush. All right. Get that all cleaned out good. We want our parallels to seat good. We want everything as square as we can get it. Clean these off a little bit. Kind of got a little grit from all that mill scale on there. Huh? Yeah, see that isn't still not clean. Let me get a rag. Try to get these as square and parallel as we can. Okay, so now we're good. So now we'll put our reference surface down. We've got two parallels. And uh, we got we know we got these edges are parallel and square to that other reference surface. So that's good. Our overall thickness right now is actually already under dimension. It's 719. So even taking off only 30 thousandths, these were actually a little undersized to start with. So the yeah, it's only 743 with all the scale on it. So they're going to be a little small, but again, that's fine. It's just the thickness. Um, all we only really thing that matters on that is to make sure that the counter bores. Um, are deep enough for the, the socket head screws that hold it down. So, 10,000 is too skinny or whatever, won't matter. And uh, I wasn't going to buy one inch stock and have to cut that much down. So, this was uh, some eBay stuff. I got it for a really good price. So, all right, that's pretty snug. We definitely tap it all down. That sounds good. All right, we're solid. So we're just gonna skin this just as, basically as little as I can get away with uh, to make it. All right, that looks pretty well lined up. We'll put this up against our stop again. So we wanna lock a Y. Take just as little as we can to get off of this and the thickness on these two. Again, it's not super critical. Uh, we want them as thick as we can get it, but mostly we want them flat and parallel. Let me just touch this off. And I'm going to try. I'm going to try just. Uh, I think. Let's. Uh, I'm going to try twenty thousandths and hope that'll take all the scale off. I really, really don't want to have to take any more than that. We'll see. just run across all nice yeah oh yeah it's got a really nice finish it's got a cross hatch so it's trimmed in it's nice and straight we're good there looks like anyway if it didn't move on us I think we're pretty good okay all right so now this one, other than the ends, is uh, is in good shape, square and parallel. I'm going to square up the other one off camera before I do the ends because then I have to take out the face mill and everything else. So um, take off our burr here, a little more here. So 
So we're pretty good there. So we got a pretty good finish on everything. It's really feels good. Still not quite square. So it all seems good. Seems seems really nice. So we definitely got a lot to take off of here, so I'm not worried about this chunk out of here right now. Um, plus we gotta cut some off the end. But I'm mostly I wanted this to be uh, square, parallel. So our finish size on this one is uh, pretty pretty small. 696, it's a little under 700. Again, they don't have to be super good. It's nice and flat though. Then five tenths of each other. So that's good. Um, the important part is that they're that they're the same. Um, the thickness doesn't even have to be the same on them. It's just the just the height and the length. So I'm um, gonna square the other one up off the camera, and I'll be back.